The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of the divine fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Monkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against him. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes. Nate Bonnet, who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer! Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. Risks? What risks? Now, gin magic is a complicated affair. It's difficult to get the dose right, and when one hasn't done magic for a while, things can go a little bit wrong. Like you killing me, for example? Not... not intentionally. No big thing. So, now that we have a little time to kill, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself? Oh, right. Well, um, yes, I came into this world in an oasis in the Umzu Desert, and at that time, I was... Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Definitely not the time to reminisce. Then why did you ask? I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast a spell. Time to make up for it, then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Let me see. I'm accompanying tons of boulders in a plummet to certain painful death. My death. So just how do you think you could make things any worse? Worse? I could set the air on fire, or it could start smelling. Very bad. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! Benny! Ah! 
date easy and we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do. A flying carpet! Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Uh, I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And that I shook your lamp. And everything else. You meant well. Well, all right, then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Hmm. A flying carpet. Hmm. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? happened here? No! Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. Use the left stick to move the character. Well done. If you walk up to an object, context-sensitive actions will be displayed. Walk up to that big lever and press X. Robot has used the lever, as this seemed logical to him. Now press circle so that the robot looks at the lever rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That ha Little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Press X again next to the hatch. The first time you press X will allow you to look, the second to use. It's quite simple. Press circle when you want to look at something. Press X in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Walk up to the lever and press X.
appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gears by pressing X. If you can reach several objects from one position, you can use the right stick to select the one you want to interact with. Great work! Items you pick up will go into your inventory. You open and close your inventory by pressing triangle. To use an inventory item, select it with X and then select the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now how about dealing with the second gear? Perfect. You'd better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then open the inventory with triangle and press circle in order to examine the toolbox. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially selecting the first object with X and then using it on the second object again with X. Try... Well done! Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the machine.
worried about you. Oh, mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the Elf Kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheek. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world, and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. Have you seen this, Prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love. Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room. And then it's replaced and planted in the garden. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. 
elven craftsmen have centuries to perfect their artistic skills. Only when everything is always perfect, then isn't everything always the same and somehow unimportant? An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. I've been sleeping badly of late, and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the Elf Burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. Could you please move aside? I want to get into my jewellery box. Hmm, he doesn't listen to me anymore since I almost caused him to be roasted by fireballs, decapitated by swords and eaten by monsters. Mother has permitted him to disregard any of my orders that go against her wishes. His interpretation of this can be liberal. Cheap, the box, please. Oh. Cheap, the box, please. Oh. Cheap Cheap likes to look at his reflection. He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it and succeeds most of the time. Hey, Cheep Cheep, I need the mirror. I only need it for a minute. Oh, he's not budging, and his pecs can be damn painful when he puts his mind to it. when the others were here in the elf burrow. Those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. <laughs> Complete idiot. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride.
We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but some flowers are my favourite. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. I've seen much suffering, much evil and unkindness in the world out there, but it was exciting. It was alive. Here in the Elf Burrow, everything is so ordered, so perfect, so dull. One day's just like the next, and they just pass by endlessly. It may not be befitting of a princess, but this isn't the first time that I've climbed into the garden via the balcony, and it won't be the last. I, um, I'm just doing my morning exercises. I wasn't going to. <sighs> of course, I could just ignore him and climb down into the garden anyway. He would, however, make a beeline to Mother and tell on me, and who knows what the two of them would cook up for me next. Okay, he's not looking this way. Oh, there is more than one kind of stretch exercise, you know. Perhaps you'd like to train with me. No chance. I can't sneak down as long as Cheep Cheep's on guard. <laughs> 